Open worlds are incredible. Nothing compares to the feeling of exploration. The fact that you can climb a mountain, point out in the distance and say, yeah, I'm gonna go over there, can really make or break a game for me. I'm creating a 2D game with open worlds, but how can I create that feeling of looking out into the horizon when my character can't even look up? With a fixed field of view, players can easily walk past something that's just outside the camera, and in an open world, that's a problem. Because you can have all the interesting creatures you want, but if you can't find them, then what's the point? We're going to look at how other games tried to solve this problem, how I can incorporate their ideas into my game, and most importantly, I'll fill the world with interesting creatures and puzzles that will make my game scholar worth exploring. Let's fix the open world in my 2D game. So first, we need to quickly establish what Scholar is before we fix it. You must solve puzzles to find spells, upgrade them in your home village, combine the spells for huge damage, and defeat massive bosses to save the world. Now back to the open world problem. Here we see a player walking through the forest, which seems pretty empty. But wait a minute. If the player had just walked north a little bit, they would have seen this knight impaled by a rock spike. So what, you might think? Well, if the player rescues the soul of the knight, they'll be rewarded with a treasure chest. What's in that treasure chest? A spell called Sand Shield. This spell blocks all attacks against the player. So while this scholar is looking like a goddamn anime up here, the player who just kept walking to the right is getting beat up. How can we fix this? Elden Ring tackles this problem in a unique way. There are these statues hidden all over the world, and when the player interacts with the statue, it points towards a dungeon that is hidden. So let's steal that idea. When the player loads into the world and they open their minimap, they'll see these sparkles on the map. If the player walks towards these sparkles, they'll find a statue. And if they activate the statue, then the statue will draw a line on the minimap from where the player is to where there is a point of interest. Sounds pretty good on paper and it worked on Elden Ring, so I gave it a go and you know what I discovered? This is bad game design. Well, at least for 2D games. You might be wondering, why is a bad game design? Well, what actually happens is the player loads into the map, walks straight to the sparkles, walks straight to where the indicator points, and it removes all the exploration and player choice that I'm looking for in an open world. In fact, the open world just becomes an annoyance at this point. It's just a middleman. So why does it work in Elden Ring? It's because Elden Ring is a 3D world where you can look around. In practice, in a 3D world, you need to find a vantage point first. Then you can look around and choose where to go. Do you want to go to the statue that will point you to the right direction? Well, you need to find it first, and it's not just some sparkles on your map. So if I want the player to see something cool, like this giant plant monster, I need to recreate that experience of finding the vantage point first. And I know what you're thinking. What is that plant monster? Well, if you go up to it, Wait, there's no point in explaining the plant monster does if the player will never find it. So let's solve that first. So I think I need to keep the indicators on the minimap. You can't actually look around in a 2D world, so it's a necessary evil. But what if we recreate the feeling of finding a vantage point, like in a 3D world? So instead of pointing a line straight to the point of interest, we'll zoom the camera out and give the player a better view of what's around. Now they can choose what point of interest they want to check it out. Like the plant monster. So if you activate the statue and you walk over to the plant monster, you notice it won't attack you, which in this game is a little weird. It does, however, look hungry. I wonder what would happen if you lured a monster near it. I wonder what would happen if you kept feeding it. Well, you're gonna have to try it out yourself. Make sure to whisk Scholar on Steam so you'll know right when it comes out. The response from my last video was crazy and y'all have brought the wish list way above 500. Thank you so much. If you are into Scholar, then make sure to share the video or like and subscribe it. The more wish lists I get on Scholar, the better chance Steam will highlight it on their main page. So thank you all again for watching and keep a lookout for the release date.